Now, for those of you who are new viewers to this channel, this channel basically tries to make wines and meads as simply as possible using as many ingredients that you can purchase at the store as possible. We don't make fancy wines here. We make them as simple as we can. And to make this wine, what we're going to be using is a one quart container of Zinfandel red grape concentrate. Acting as our acid blend substitute, we'll be, we'll be using the juice of one quarter of a lemon. Acting as our tannin substitute, which is what is sometimes used to provide a little bit of, of astringency on the wine at the back end. Sometimes they use oak chips or oak barrels to achieve the same results. We'll be using one black tea bag. We're going to be using a little bit of a homemade yeast nutrient, so we're going to need a little bit of active dry yeast. This time around, I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Classique wine yeast. Using this one because it does have an AVB tolerance of about 15% and it is really used for Zinfandel's and deep red wines to keep that color and character. We're going to need enough clean filtered water to bring our measure up to one gallon. We're going to use either a one gallon or in this case a four liter carboy. We are going to need an airlock with bung. I'm going to be using an eight quart pot. If you have one, a hydrometer will come in handy. And of course, by using your sanitizer of choice, you want to make sure that everything has been properly cleaned and sanitized before we start making this wine. And that is what we are going to be using to make this wine. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to pour off a quart of our one gallon of water. That's one liter for you non-imperial folk. Since we're going to be adding a quart of concentrate, we want to make sure we got our concentrations correct. Now that we're over the stove, we're going to go ahead and pour off anywhere from a quarter to half a cup of our remaining water to a small pan, pot, whatever. Don't need to be precise. In the remainder, we want to go ahead and pour that into our larger pot. Go ahead and pour in our concentrate. Getting as much of it out of the bottle as possible. And yes, I do intend to rinse this and get any remaining that might still be in the bottle. I'm going to go ahead and turn our heat on. And over here, we want to go ahead and add in our black tea bag, which is going to act as our tannin substitute. And also our quarter of a teaspoon of bread yeast, which is going to act as our yeast nutrient. Turn the stove on that and we just want to bring that up to a simmer. And this might go a little bit faster if we put our lid on. Now the purpose of using the stove to heat up our juice and our concentrate is that this channel doesn't use sulfites. So ordinarily, where most people would simply drop in a Camden tablet, you know, call it a day, wait for it to work, uh, we want to make sure that we kill off any of the wild yeast or <laughs> some of the other bacteria that might still be on there. Can't kill them all, but we can at least do a good job. So we just want to bring the temperature up uh, just to a, a, a very low boil, uh, really no more than 165 degrees really is all that we need. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm going to take a quick temperature reading to make sure that we're above that 165 that I'm looking for. I mean, this is not super critical. If it's at a low, if you don't have a thermometer and if you see it at a low simmer, then, I mean, that's more than good to go. Right now, I'm looking at about 172. More than I need, but 
don't need no more. So I'm going to turn the stove off here. And with regard to our yeast nutrient slash tannin substitute, and this is the first time I decided to just put them all in one pot. Let's go ahead and add that to the mix. Set that aside. Put our lid back on. And wait for that to come down to room temperature. All right, taking that initial hydrometer reading, it looks like our reading is coming in at 1.084. Let's go ahead and add in our acid blend substitute. And that is all I'm going to put in. Good opportunity to give this a nice, good, vigorous stir. And what we want to do is try and incorporate a little bit of additional oxygen, help the yeast out early on. Now, if you prefer, you could actually do this in the carboy. Just pour half of it in, give it a nice, good, vigorous shake for about a good, at least a good minute or two, and then go ahead and pour in the rest. And I think that's going to be enough for now. Put the lid back on. Now, normally in my videos, I would just simply transfer the juice into a carboy, sprinkle the yeast on top, label it, put it away, and call it a day. But in honor of the occasion, we're making a Zinfandel, which is one of my preferred wines. I am going to bloom my yeast. So I've got a quarter of a teaspoon, which is my usual measurement. You can use more if you like. And I'm just going to let the yeast hydrate. before adding it to our carboy. Okay, I've taken the opportunity to go ahead and fill up the carboy. I thought I'd spare you the 30 to 40 seconds it would have taken me to show you me filling it. And before adding in the last of the yeast, I'm gonna give it that one last good shake. cap off, put my funnel in, and go ahead and add in our yeast. That having been done, take our airlock, which has been filled. This time I'm using a mixture of star sand and water as my liquid. Go ahead and put that in nice and firmly. And move on to the next step. Okay, it is now time to label our creation. We are making, hopefully, a Zinfandel wine. Additionally, we started it on this date, May 13th, 2022, and our starting gravity was 1.084. Now, that was the easy part. The hard part's going to be that for the next, oh, I don't know, six or seven weeks, we're going to keep an eye on this uh, someplace uh, out of direct sunlight. Dark would be better. And then we want to make sure that uh, after that time we rack it, if need be, should the layer of lease at the bottom starts to exceed anywhere between half inch to a quarter of an inch into a secondary carboy and continue that process as necessary for the next several months. 
Now they say Zinfandel doesn't really start getting ready until two years of fermentation. We will be doing a one year fermentation, which is about the time that I intend to bottle this. And if I'm still around in two years, we'll do another tasting to see if things have improved. Now the winemaking process that usually occurs after this, you can find in a playlist that I have on my channel playlist page under winemaking operations. Uh, if you wish to follow along with any of the steps that uh, occur after this. Now then, if you like what you see here, please click on that subscribe and notify buttons and I will continue to do these on a regular basis. See you in the next video.